talk bad about y'all for like yeah, a couple he, weeks. Yeah, you know, yeah, no about <laughs> Did you think you needed me to be like strong and strong? Right. That's exactly what I thought. Yeah. I told him I feel like my whole childhood life was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> so I definitely thought I was gonna miss it. And honestly, I haven't even thought about it in years. But I feel more energized, feel stronger. It was pretty dope. And what about the taste? The taste is really good. And the meals were always looking good. And I found myself sitting in a locker staring at what they're eating. So, you know, I tried it, and honestly, I mean, I felt the difference, and, you know, I was able to just perform consistently. Yeah, you caught your first touchdown after you switched over, right? <laughs> Six months into my new diet, my strength, endurance, and recovery were better than ever. My dad's health was on the mend. Even my wife and kids were on board. But I was also pissed off. Why didn't everyone know about this? And then I remembered my grandfather, who died of heart failure at the age of 63 after more than four decades of smoking. A paratrooper in World War II, he got hooked on cigarettes during a time when young people like him were being sold the idea that smoking was actually good for you. Babe Ruth, idol of to sell this idea, the tobacco industry turned to famous athletes, the ultimate symbols of fitness and health. After a game, Carl Perillo of the Dodgers looks for a mild cigarette, a camel, of course. But right around the time Babe Ruth died from throat cancer in his early 50s, the scientific evidence was starting to stack up, so a new marketing plan was required. According to this nationwide survey, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. For years, the tobacco industry said that their cigarettes did not cause cancer. And they trotted out their own paid researchers to come out with statements to confuse the issue. Despite their efforts, cigarette ads were eventually banned from sports broadcasting, just in time for another big industry to step up to the plate and start playing the same game. What's in the bag? Big Mac? Play it for it with a new generation of athletes, including me. But it wasn't long before the evidence against animal foods started stacking up as well. Now that playbook is being used by the food industry. She's from the National Cattlemen's Beef Association. They're going to hire their so-called experts. I'm first of all a registered dietitian and nutrition scientist, and I'm a mom. To create Processed just meat. enough confusion. Are you saying with processed meat that it is not, in your view, carcinogenic? I don't say that it supports a sufficient relationship. And they make it seem as though there's doubt about what we're talking about. This is not a link, a causal link, between red and processed meat and any type of cancer. But would you recommend reducing meat intake? No, not at all. How on earth is the viewer supposed to make sense of all of this? With overwhelming scientific evidence connecting animal foods to many of the most common deadly diseases, I discovered that the meat, dairy, and egg industries have engaged in a covert response, funding studies that deny this evidence while burying their involvement in the fine print. One of the hired guns paid to conduct these studies is Exponent Incorporated, a company whose research was used by the tobacco industry to deny the connection between secondhand smoke and cancer. For more than 50 years, Exponent has generated studies that challenge the health risks of everything from asbestos, arsenic, and mercury to animal foods. The formula works beautifully for people selling food. It works beautifully for people selling drugs to treat the diseases that bad food causes. And it works beautifully for the media, which can give us a new story about diet every day. Here we go again. New guidelines are muddled and confusing, and not by accident. Eggs are in. So yeah. happy about the eggs. I know, <laughs> I am happy about the eggs. Eating bacon is OK. Absolutely. <laughs> OK, butter. Butter, butter is back. But despite the appearance in our media of confusion, there is massive global consensus about the fundamentals of a health-promoting diet. And it's a diet that every time no matter whether it's high in fat or low in fat, higher in carbs, lower in carbs, in every population, every kind of research, it's a plant food predominant diet, every time. Just when I thought I'd uncovered every dark secret of the animal foods industry, I got invited to train a paramilitary group in Zimbabwe with a special mission. 
Okay, so just be very careful, guys. Stay on the stay on the rocks. Yeah. Okay. So these guys are now listed as critically endangered. There's only about 5,000 of them left on the planet. They're basically being hunted to extinction because of the value of their horn, around $40,000 a pound. Damien Manda is a retired special operations sniper who completed 12 tours of duty in Iraq. He's also the founder of the International Anti-Poaching Foundation. Poacher maybe have an axe or a knife, uh, so okay. we're trying to disarm them. Yeah, yeah. So, he's going to thrust with the knife. <coughs> yeah. We are the SEAL Team 6 of conservation. We're the guys that go in and stop the hemorrhaging. Yeah, I'll stick to my AK-47. <laughs> I lived every young boy's dream. Jumping out of choppers, blowing shit up, stuff that most kids uh, can only dream of doing on a PlayStation. I came to Africa because I was looking for the next six months adventure. I saw a bull elephant that had had its face cut off. Tusks that had been taken, the whole elephant sitting there dead because some guy wants to have a tusk on his desk. What sort of ambush is this called? Ambush, I had money and I had skills that could help these rangers. Using the minimum amount of force required to get the job And I made the choice to, to dedicate my life to helping these guys protect these animals. After making that choice, though, I started to realise that every day I was going out on patrol and protecting one animal and coming home at night and putting another animal on the fire. And I knew I was, I knew I was full of shit. I created this flexible morality that was convenient for me, because if you don't eat meat, you're some sort of vegan that shrivels up into a string bean. In my mind, I justified it. There's enough cows on the planet, they're not gonna go extinct. But the longer I thought about it, the more I started to accept what I already knew. The easiest way to protect other animals is just not to put them in your mouth. This whole fantasy that we need meat to get our protein, it's actually bullshit. I mean, look at a gorilla. A gorilla will fuck you up in two seconds. Uh, what does a gorilla eat? I just do the same things as these big gray things out here that we're trying to protect, elephant and rhino. I just uh, stick to plans. The rangers that we support patrol five million acres of wilderness, protecting these endangered species. But the actual biggest threat we have is the meat industry and the land that they are continually taking away from what we have left of these natural wilderness areas. Inch by inch, yard by yard, mile by mile. Three quarters of all the agricultural land in the world is used for livestock production, and it imposes a huge cost on biodiversity. And what is the single biggest source of habitat destruction? It's the livestock sector. Meat, dairy, egg, and fish farming use 83% of the world's farmland, yet provide only 18% of the world's calories. The reason livestock requires so much land is because, once again, animals are just the middlemen, consuming, on average, six times more protein than they produce. With more than 70 billion animals consumed globally each year, growing animal feed requires vast amounts of land, making it one of the leading drivers of deforestation. It also requires huge amounts of water, meat plays a disproportionately large role in causing this overuse of fresh water. 25% of the rivers in the world no longer reach the ocean because we're taking out so much water to produce animal feed. Water has been fed into the grain that's been fed to the cattle. The cattle's been made into beef. One hamburger is 2,400 liters of embedded water. That's a heck of a lot of water. All told, more than a quarter of humanity's fresh water consumption goes to produce animal foods. And it's not just water depletion that's an issue, it's also water pollution. 
In the United States, for example, farm animals produce nearly 50 times more waste per year than its entire human population, polluting rivers, lakes, and groundwater all across the country. The livestock sector is responsible for 15% of global man-made emissions. So to put that in perspective, that's about the same as all the emissions from all the forms of transport in the world, all the planes, trains, cars, vans and ships, all added up. Agriculture is not only the biggest culprit threatening the future for humanity on Earth, it is also the biggest and most important silver bullet to a solution. In the US, where meat consumption is three times the global average, shifting away from an animal-based diet would reduce agricultural emissions by up to 73% and save one million liters of water per person per year. Globally, this shift would free up a total area of land the size of Africa, taking pressure off many of the world's most endangered ecosystems and species. The message is overwhelming, both for public health and environmental reasons. The more plants you can eat and the less meat and dairy you can consume, the better. After learning how much is at stake if we don't change the way we eat, I went back to Brooklyn to find some hope. Did you do it right the whole seven days? Yeah, the entire time. You did? Yeah. Good for you. After eating a meal, I didn't feel like, oh, I got to go find a couch to sit on or lay down, like that I actually felt energized right. and right. I could jump on yeah. the bicycle or go on the treadmill or something. Or fight a fire. Your cholesterol was 262, right. all right, which is elevated, much higher than right. we want to be. Mm -hmm. Today, 176. Wow. Almost 100 points, huh? That's fantastic. So, yeah. Thank you. On your blood pressure, you dropped uh, 16. Wow, that's really good. On your really systolic good. And, and two on your diastolic. So you're now 130 over 82 as opposed to 146 over 84. Fantastic. A little bump there. Yeah. Your cholesterol was 276. I mean, you know that that's super elevated, right? Yeah, they were, they were freaking out. They were freaking out. <laughs> they had the doctor's well, office. You know what? They should be freaking out now because today it was 169. Whoa, now you're talking. <laughs> 169. You dropped 107 points, my man. That's amazing. Here's what we got. After seven days, the cholesterol average drop was 21 points. The average weight loss was 6.12 pounds. You guys, instead of having arteries that looked like this here, right? You guys are on the road having arteries that look like this here. And we know that the number one killer of in the line of duty firefighters is heart attacks. This is a food created disease. And you guys don't have to be another statistic. My doctor wanted to put me on a statin. And I kind of looked at it like that was uh, like cheating, like an easy way out. And there has to be a healthier, more long-term alternative. And then when this opportunity presented itself, I took it. When you eat a healthy, whole foods, plant-based diet, it changes the expression of your genes. It turns on the good genes, turns off the bad genes. Your genes are a predisposition, but your genes are not your fate. And even if your mother and your father and aunts and uncles all died of diabetes, cancer, or even heart disease, it doesn't mean that you need to. Once I get to here, I'm gonna come up and I'm gonna drop my head on his face. With help from my new diet, I fully recovered from my injuries and am back to teaching self-defense. Or I can chop here and chop down here. But with a critical new component, Better internal defense. You can get improved blood flow. That allows more oxygen, more nutrients to the muscles. And it's not just the athlete. Armed Every with the truth in nutrition, I now have the tools to help protect more lives than ever before. It's good. Is it? Yeah. How are you feeling now? Very good. The figure that I read, it was 85% likelihood of your first attack, and that kills you. That's a high percentage. 
which makes me feel very blessed. Happy birthday, dear Pops. Happy birthday to you. Thank you. <laughs> We've gone down the vegan route, and we now have soy milk. Masha makes sure I have my vegetables. She insists on it now. Mm. How old are you? 71. 71. Mm. Glad to be here. What's up? What's going on? What's up, baby? Bruce Lee understood that the quest for truth is only useful if you're prepared to take action on what you find. It's best to lead by example. Most people say, oh, I just can't become vegan. I said, you're right, it's a process to it. I'll give you guys some vegan chocolates. People have this idea in their head that if they're gonna do something, it's an all or nothing approach, and that's not the case at all. If you go to people and say, you must stop eating meat, they would say, fuck you. What the fuck are you to tell me about how to eat? But if you explain it, say, hey, why don't you try once a week? Just chill it with the meat. 50 years ago, no one talked about, hey, maybe you should just get your protein from vegetables. But now, there is many, many athletes, professional athletes in all kinds of different sports that have done extremely well staying away from animal foods. Lewis Hamilton wins the German Grand Prix! We all want to feel great. We all want to look great, have more energy. The most important thing is about having the right fuel in your body. I can't remember feeling this great in my whole 32 years of my life. At the 20, cuts back at the 15, and Matthews goes! Opening play, touchdown for the Titans! And I don't ever remember a comeback like this. This is unreal. This was our best season in the last 15 years. Sack, that was Arakpo and Derek Morgan. And we had about 14 guys on plant-based diets. Jarrell Casey, Brian Arakpo. Great spot in this game was this Titans defense. Oh my goodness! Double-digit sacks for Derek Morgan. He had his best season of his career. Titans on their way to the playoffs. We did it, baby! playoff win on my birthday was probably the pinnacle of my career so far. Everybody's talked about the defensive line in this diet. It was the burritos. It was the breakfast burritos. That's what it was. That'll get you to the playoffs. By the time Scott reached Mount Katahdin, word of his perseverance was bringing people out in droves. But after 46 days and nearly 2,200 miles, Scott had only a few hours left to break the record. This will be the heaviest weight that anyone has ever carried on their shoulders. Patrick will be attempting 555 kilos, which is 1,224 pounds. This is an official Guinness World Record. The potential of the human body is immense. You can come out of some of the deepest, darkest holes if you keep pressing forward. I'm gonna do this. Woo! Here we go! No record in its hands! Scott Jurek is one of the world's most accomplished ultra marathoners. His latest quest, the Appalachian Trail. It takes most hikers five to seven months. Jurek did it in 46 days, eight hours, and seven minutes. Three hours faster than the previous record. It's not about being the strongest and the biggest. It's really about what are you going to do with your strength and what are you going to do with the power that you have. Ah. 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 
I'm in it just to rewrite history. Cause I'm in the mood 